Hey everybody, welcome to Mud Girl Pottery YouTube Station. This is my very first episode. My name is Melanie Tamazuski. I own two pottery studios here in New Jersey. We offer classes for every level, but what I really love to do is teach beginners. It's great to see how hard it is in the beginning and how eventually it just clicks. Uh, turns out I'm pretty good at teaching beginners because I teach the easiest way to do things. It might not necessarily be the way I do things after 20 some odd years experience, but what I find is my methods tend to be a little foolproof until you really get to learn the clay. Too many potters, uh, instructors teach you to just feel the clay and you can't feel the clay unless you know what the hell you're doing. So I'm gonna start off first with um, just a basic cylinder. It's what we do with our syllabus here at the studio. I am a four tool human. I am a pin tool or noodle, needle tool person, a wood tool person, a sponge tool person, a wire tool, which we'll get to later. And I also like to throw on bats. I personally throw on these square bats. Um, they're plastic, they're easy to clean, they're easy to put next to each other when you're doing multiple pieces. Um, as beginners, I usually give people the masonite ones. The plastic ones tend to warp and until you really know how to center, it's best to use the ones um, that don't warp. If you are using a masonite bat, I do not wet the bat. Some potters will teach you to wet the bat, I do not. Uh, the bat is thirsty when it's masonite and it wants to drink something. It'll drink the water from your clay and it'll help it stick. If you wet it first, it's not as thirsty and as a beginner, you're more likely to get that clay to slide off of the wheel. Um, this is a Brent. Um, I usually recommend for beginners to use a Shimpo Whisper. It doesn't need um, a lot of work to get it to move. It doesn't go too fast. It goes lefty if you need it to. So, but this is a Brent, so it's a little noisier. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bat straight on my wheel. I start with a ball. I do not wedge clay if it comes out of the bag. I hate wedging and that's the one thing I'm very bad at teaching. So we're going to actually skip that. I kind of start with a sweet potato or an egg and I slap it right in the middle. Now, if it's a little off center, take it off and put it back on. Every step builds on the next step. If you do not have the first step correct, the next step is never gonna work and so on and so on and so on. So the best practice is to get it in the center. Why make it hard? A couple of rules that I have here is, number one, we always make sure our hands are wet when we touch the clay. We never, ever, ever touch the clay unless the wheel is moving. And we always put our hands on the clay and away from the clay very slowly as we start to pull our walls. The first step is centering. I don't expect anyone to get in the beginning and it's super hard to figure out from just watching a video. When I first started doing this, I was 90 pounds. Not so much with the COVID going on right now. Um, but what I learned is if I locked my elbow into my hip right here and I kept my elbow at this lock position, I used my entire body to push the clay into the center, it will eventually get where it's gotta go. So I'm gonna start with my wheel going super fast. Don't be afraid of the speed. I'm not pushing in yet because that'll push the clay off. I'm gonna push, hold my hands together, elbows close together, elbows down on my body, armpits closed. I'm gonna push down with the side of my hand and in with my left palm, which is also being pushed by my left hip. Now, some stronger people can just muscle it into spot, into submission. Um, when you're a smaller or a female that's not so strong, you might need to lock that in there. So. As I start to karate chop the clay down, I'm only working on one quarter of the clay. I'm not pushing my hand across the whole top. I am just pushing down on one quarter. Eventually, if you put your whole hand on top, each part of your hand has a different strength. So it's confusing the clay and it doesn't really know where it wants to go. I compare this often to a record player. A record player needle only touches one part of the record and the record comes in to meet that record. So as I start to push in with my left palm and down with my right hand, the clay will actually, it's only a pound and a quarter, it'll eventually just kind of listen to you and go where you want it to go. I'm gonna teach coning in another lesson when I get to be a little bit bigger in clay. I just wanna get you guys the basic steps. So I want you to notice that if I take my hand up super fast, it'll actually throw the clay off, but if I get my clay centered, which means that all the clay is in the center and I slowly take my hands off, I can see it in the camera right there, it stays pretty steady. So now what we wanna do is we wanna open up our pottery. There's a lot of different ways. Some people use one finger, some people use two thumbs. For beginners, I recommend one thumb. 
I recommend leaving your left arm right where your left arm has been, your right hand right next to it. You're not squeezing the clay, you're just resting your hands down on the back. Take your right thumb, push it down just a little bit until it stops sort of wiggling around, and then you're gonna go straight down. Notice I did not lift my elbow off of my body. My arm didn't go all the way up in the air. I just kind of scooped it down. That'll help the clay stay centered while you're trying to use the pressure. Now I said earlier, we never ever ever touch the clay unless the wheel is moving, except for right now. I'm gonna dip our pin tool down in the bottom. You're gonna put your down to the center, put your finger down there and see how thick it is. We're gonna talk about um, trimming another day. So that is a good thickness. I wouldn't go any thinner. Once it goes thin, guys, there's no way of making it thick again. So now we wanna open up the floor of our pot and we're always aiming for cylinders because cylinders are hard. Um, we're working against the centripetal force and that centripetal force wants you to make a plate. So we're gonna make a cylinder. So the inside is gonna be squared off like that. What I teach beginners is, is get that left hand, again, attached to your entire body. Two fingers, make them the same length. Pull it inside down to where you put that hole and pull straight towards your belly and come out. So you're going in and out. Do not scoop up. If you scoop up, chances are you're gonna end up making a very thin lip and that's gonna kinda stick with you for the rest of the pot and it's gonna be hard to uh, maintain that. I'm gonna go ahead and get the water out of the inside of my pot. If you let the water stay in there, um, it will actually create an S crack or it'll just be sort of wonky and warped. So now the one thing that everyone always forgets and the most important step right now is to slow down your wheel. If you maintain the super fast speed that you centered, opened, and created your floor with, the clay is gonna wanna go where? Out. And again, we're trying not to make a plate by accident, we're trying to make a cylinder. So we wanna slow our wheel down to about 75%. Now one of the harder things that people find when they're making pottery and beginning is keeping their hands wet. So with beginners, I teach them to use a sponge. You can use your sponge tool, um, or you can just take a dish sponge, whatever you'd like to try. And what we teach people here is the finger taco. Put your finger inside the meat, inside the shell, leave the water inside. Your hands are gonna be attached. If your hands are not attached, you're working with two different tools. If your hands are attached, it's one tool. We're gonna start at three o'clock and we're gonna start all the way at the bottom. I want you to start at the back down here. So we're going like this. And we're gonna to start to pull our walls. Now we wanna move our hands, scoop up some clay from the bottom, and we wanna move our hands at the same pace as the wheel head. So with every rotation, you're gonna go up just a little bit. Now what am I doing with my fingers? I'm actually scooping with my two fingers and this finger and this finger are backing up those two pointer fingers. My hands are attached. I'm taking some clay up from the bottom, parallel. Sometimes some people go this way, one finger over the other, and we're just gonna pinch up. And start down to the bottom again. Put a lot of pressure where it's thick, less pressure where it's thinner. Now, a lot of people end up with this weird sort of spiral. If you think about a spiral staircase, if you think about a spiral staircase, a spiral staircase will go in circles and won't make a full rotation, so therefore one side ends up higher than the other. That is the biggest mistake people happen, happen to do because they do this. You see that, how that's going up like that? We want to make sure that our wheel goes around a full rotation before we go up. And we always wanna make sure that we go up all the way. We don't wanna jump off at the top right here. We almost wanna pretend that there's some extra clay up at the top. And then we wanna compress our lip. Pointy, sharp lips will always chip. Chip from Beauty and the Beast, his name is Chip because his lip was too thin. His name would've been Charles if his lip was a little thicker. But I'm bum I promise not to have too many stupid jokes in this series, but every once in a while, I entertain myself. So now as your walls start to get thinner, you're gonna wanna slow your wheel down, but never too slow. We wanna remember to breathe, and if we wait until we're at the end to breathe and our wheel's going slow, we're never gonna get around to finishing our pot. It doesn't take long to throw a pot. A lot of people think that, um, oh, wow, that was so fast. 
it really is only two or three pulls once you get confident. Um, I'm gonna do something here. Uh, the expression here is call it a pot. When we say call it a pot, it means stop touching the clay. It means we know what we're doing here as instructors and if you keep on touching, it's never going to go home with you. So when we feel that our wall is thick enough and we've got the desired shape, we wanna trim off the excess on the bottom. So we wet our wood tool, we hold it like a pencil. This is sort of the blade and we wanna line that up with the side of our pot. Hold on to the top because it is gonna pull a little and we're gonna slowly drive it in to the bottom of our pot until we hit the bat and then we're gonna come on up the way we went in. We're gonna take our pin tool. This is actually, a lot of people will use their wood tool and just kind of push down. For beginners, I don't recommend that. The clay will actually go up into your pot sometimes. This is again, the beginner easiest way to do it. Put your pin tool flat underneath that loop of clay until you meet that bat. Come on out, stop your wheel. As I say all the time, make this go away, recycle it. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our wire tool. Um, I am a big fan of this very, very fine um, wire tool by Dirty Girls. Uh, it's my favorite, people steal them from me. And I wanna go flat towards me until I come all the way to myself. Now, do you have to do it immediately after you're done? Um, I don't think so, but for this sake, I'm gonna show you to do it now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half. People usually get shocked when I do that, but the truth is if I'm gonna throw pots, I'm gonna throw a lot of pots, not just one and walk away. The cleanup is way too much. Um, I wanna show you guys the insides. We're gonna make this part go away. So I could have gone a little thinner on this, but our goal is to make it evenly consistent all the way through. We want the inside to look like the outside and we want very little clay over in the edge here that would be wasted. If I was to leave more clay on this with the same pound of weight of ball, um, I would actually lose probably about a half an inch of the pot. And when you start to make sets and you wanna really start to sell things, you could lose two, three pots out of a bag if you don't learn to get all of the clay up into your pot. So this is really great because this right here has to be wedged up. You can never, ever, ever, a lot of my beginners will go back and go, oh, okay, I'm ready to go. Can't do that. Um, I didn't talk about wedging, but there's a whole bunch of air bubbles in there and you'll never get it centered. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed my very first episode um, on Mud Girl Pottery, a basic lesson on how to throw a cylinder for beginners. I do throw, do throw things a little bit differently than what I showed you, but I find that each one of the steps that I showed you are best for beginners. So hope you have a great day. Share this with your friends, please. Subscribe to my channel. I'm hoping to have a whole bunch more from beginner to advanced. Have a great day, guys.